What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 161 of Category 5 wow. Technology TV. 161 weeks. You say, wow, like it was just wow. yesterday. Well, it was just... It's just like okay. it seems like a few weeks. It does. Like this is only like four, episode four 5 weeks. for me. Five? Isn't it? 4? Fantastic. Three? I don't know. Hey, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. My name's Robbie Ferguson. Hi, am Eric Kidd. Hey, that was good. You'd think we planned that. We did. We were working on that yeah. for like 20 minutes before the show. <laughs> Tonight we've got lots of stuff going on. Uh, of course, it is Tuesday, October the 19th, 2010. In case you were wondering, you can set your clocks by us. Here we are. Uh, we are going to be looking at some new audio editing software that is available in Ubuntu as of 2.04 and uh, also, uh, t did I say 2.04? 10.04 yeah. and also 10.10. It's available in there. We're going to be qualifying you for a, uh, a draw for a brother multifunction center printer. And we got something to give away tonight. As you, I'm still playing with the nano said. dots. He's still I, playing I with made the nano this dots. very nice. It's like a string or something. I'm I'm waiting for oh, that thing okay. to just collapse and. No, no, it's pretty pretty powerful. Yeah. Give me your uh, give, me your, give, me, give me your hard drive. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's really what we got going on tonight. And uh, certainly we've got lots and lots and lots of questions. We've got Eric questions? is trying to learn Twitter. Hey. Twitter.com/slash/kid_eric to follow him. And yes, twitter.com slash Robbie Ferguson to, uh, to chat with me. And of course, our hashtag being Category 5. Tonight, uh, we have our, uh, our friend uh, Mark joining us from Brother Canada. Mark Ruel is. Uh, there he is. Hey, Mark, how are you? Hi, Robbie. Good, good. Hey, Mark. Hi. So Mark is uh, joining us from Brother Canada. And uh, Mark, we just kind of wanted to talk with you tonight. A little bit about uh, now. I, I was previously self-employed uh, way back in the day, and and one of the things that I had real trouble with was was keeping myself organized, keeping my business organized, and uh, would love to kind of tap into your knowledge. I know you've been kind of doing the rounds uh, in Canada about uh, finding out what uh, what we can do to to get our our home offices and our small businesses organized. So. Love to hear what you uh, what you have to uh, contribute to that kind of conversation, and and we're watching the chat room here, just so you know, Mark, uh, to to answer your questions. So make sure you get the chat room up there. It's category five dot TV, and uh, we welcome your questions. Good to have you here. Oh, nice to be here. Thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah, cheers, uh, uh, Robbie. Um, how many how many hours a month would you say you spend cleaning your home office? <laughs> This week or, or this month? No. Oh, like how much? How many hours a month? My wife is watching this, so I dare not inflate those numbers, Mark. Uh, <laughs> I would say f maybe three or four. Three or four hours a month? Myself, yeah, but but my, my home <laughs> office is really my studio, right? So that's a little bit different. When I was in business for myself, I would say it was it was much much less than that. My wife I would, would say, attest to yeah, that. You know, and I would say that that goes along with uh, what we've found is that most people don't really pay much attention to cleaning the home office. Uh, it's a place where, you know, you normally you just uh, throw stuff on your desk and then you uh, get back to it whenever you can because you're too busy going on with your professional life or your personal life. And uh, it, it becomes uh, more of a footlocker than an office sometimes. Yeah, uh, Agamotto says that he spends probably about 15 minutes a week. And, and well, I know exactly what you're saying there, but I, I'm organized to the point where my piles, I know what's what and where's, where things are. Well, yeah, see, but, uh, it, and it's, it's great that, you, that, that it is that way. There was, yeah. a, there was a study that was done in the USA by GFK Roper uh, Custom Research. They surveyed uh, 800 uh, part-time and full-time professionals to measure the cost and the effects of disorganization in the workplace, and they came up with some really amazing facts. Uh, one of them was uh, they estimate that the total cost of uh, looking for items in the workplace uh, in Canada and the U.S. tops $89 billion annually. What? Uh, that's in terms of uh, work hours lost, just looking for like stuff. This is, this is just the guy getting paid $15 an hour to, look, uh, to walk around looking for pens. It's 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 all levels of uh, all levels of, uh, of the workforce. That's so staggering. You can imagine. It's a, it's a very very serious problem to be uh, to be disorganized in the uh, in the home office as well. Um, Seventy eight percent of the respondents in this study 
uh, felt that uh, a disorganized or messy, look, messy looking desk uh, was uh, unprofessional. And that's, that's their perception of themselves as well as others, pe other people's uh, perception of them. 66% uh, of these people uh, that were surveyed uh, estimated that um, they spent up to 30 minutes a week just looking for lost uh, work-related items at mm -hmm. their desk or in and around the office. And 56% uh, of, uh, of people spent a similar amount of time just looking for uh, files they could not find in their, um, in their computer. Wow. So uh, disorganization is, uh, is uh, certainly uh, something that we all have to fight constantly. But you know, there's basically you know a few basic principles that you can follow uh, to help yourself through this, and um, all it takes is uh, just follow these principles and a little bit of discipline, and uh, you'll be much more organized. I mean, discipline. earlier you said, uh, Robbie, that uh, you, you you're kind of disorganized, but you know where everything is. Yeah. Well, it, it could be a, get, getting yourself a step further into you know exactly where everything is, and you never lose your concentration looking for it. That's the ideal, and and that's oh, that's what we're looking to talk about. Um, I, I, I have a few uh, techniques. Um, I'll give you an example. You have a messy work desk. Uh, some very, very uh, basic technology like an inbox. An inbox is just like a simple box that you put paperwork in. And instead of spreading it horizontally on your desk, put it in the inbox and then decide. Uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes a week, you're going to take to individually go through each of the items that gets piled up into the inbox. Mm. And there's a rule that's called uh, HIO, which is handle it once. In other words, you got to bill in that box, pick it up, go to the internet, do that post-dated uh, bill paying, and then done. that's done with it. That's one less piece of paper in your life. That's, there's, there's that's a brilliant of, thought, and I've never really given that a lot of thought. But really, I think you're, you're kind of, you're, I don't know if my wife has been talking to you on the phone or what, but <laughs> like I'll, I'll do that where I set something on my desk, and then Tuesday night comes, and I've got to clear off the desk because it's time for the show, and i got to get ready, right? And yeah. my, my wife does this to me. Mail comes and stuff. And when every Tuesday night, I come down to the studio and here's all this mail and, and stuff to go through. And I don't go through it because I exactly. end up throwing it aside or putting it in a box because I don't have time no, for I it. I have one so of those boxes, saying. but it's usually a, a black hole. Like yeah. Once it's in there, it's... <laughs> so what, what kind of uh, advice can you give to, to somebody like that where you know I'm constantly just clearing things off my desk and... Where does it go? It probably goes into a box, and I, I may never see it or, or not see it until I go through that box. I think the key you just gave to me is, is, uh, is, is the fact that you don't see it because there's so much stuff on top. It's yeah. a matter of taking a bit of time each week. Uh, you can, you can you know, specify yourself a, a time or a specific day of the week and take 20 minutes, 30 minutes just to get through that. You'll feel more organized. You'll feel more confident. Your desk will be more open, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll feel more, more able to work in a concentrated fashion. Um, there's a lot of different variations on the inbox. You can have what we call a meeting box, which is uh, when you're working on projects, you gather all the elements one by one and uh, you put them progressively into this meeting box. And when it's time to go to that meeting, all you have to do is just grab that, uh, that folder and run. You don't have mm -hmm. to sift through a bunch of stuff and panic just before your, uh, your meeting. You can oh, I see. start being built as you're, um, as you're building your project. That, that's another variation. You should always have another, another box which is called a file box which is, uh, could be the same size as the inbox, but uh, if there's documents you know you won't be looking at for like another three weeks or a month or, or four months, uh, you, you, know, you, you can put them away into that box because you know you're going to take some time and file them. I'll either put them in your filing cabinet or you can scan them electronically into your computer. Uh, that, that, those, those are just a couple of ways. Do we have uh, Pardon me? <laughs> hire Mark to come in for an afternoon every week? <laughs> <laughs> Well, gee, I, I don't know if you could afford me. I, <laughs> no, we give out, no, we give out a lot of free advice on our website, too. Uh, um, another thing I want to talk about is labeling. Labeling is, is very simple, but it's actually a really effective way of, of organizing yourself. I'll give an example. I made these, uh, these file folders here. I don't know if you can see them. I'll just bring them up to the... Uh, okay, oh, yeah. Uh, and um, I made these with a P-Touch labeler. Um, hmm. P-Touch labeler is something that you can, you can get. You can pick up for $49. Uh, uh, you can get different colored labels. You can um, and, and you can uh, color code your, your file folders. Um, sounds kind of simple, but in fact, if not, something is uh, color coded, uh, what that actually enables you to do is pick out the uh, necessary information much more quickly. If you're looking at a stack of papers, it's hard to differentiate. You just have to start reading those uh, those papers in order to to find your way through them. If if labels are color coded uh, on your folders, uh, then you can just 
you know that, for example, your, your medical folders are labeled blue, your personal folders are labeled red, uh, you've got your bill folders are, lab are labeled uh, green, for example. Mm -hmm. you, you choose uh, your categorization, but it'll certainly help you become a quicker person in office organization. Uh, that makes practical sense, and, I, and I'm glad to have you here on the show. Uh, this is uh, Mark Ruel, who's joining us from Brother Canada. Brother.ca is their website. Uh, just share, sharing some practical tips with us on uh, home office and small business uh, office organization. You can join us in the chat room, category5.tv, if you have some questions. And uh, now, is there somewhere that people can email questions to, Mark, if, uh, if they're not able to get a hold of you um, during the actual live broadcast tonight? Uh, there's a, well, you can, you can email us at brother.ca or uh, public relations at brother.ca also. Uh, you, can, you can email, email us there, uh, and uh, we, we can answer your questions if you have them, for sure. Great, because there uh, are a lot of people who watch Category 5, not necessarily live, but through uh, Miro Internet TV and other syndication partners. So, uh, so that's great to have, and we appreciate that. Uh, questions in the chat room, make sure you uh, post them to uh, my attention or to, uh, to Eric Kidd, and we'll, uh, we'll watch for it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'll let you uh, continue. I will. You know, I was going to suggest another uh, um, style of, uh, of office equipment that you can think about, mm -hmm. that everyone basically needs a printer, right? But yeah. if you were able to get a machine that not only prints, but scans, copies, faxes, uh, does all of that in the same footprint as would a printer, uh, then you'll be, you'll be ahead of the game in terms of the space you've saved uh, in your uh, home office, which we all know is probably a small space to begin with. So um, I brought along a, an example here, uh, which is a, uh, an inkjet um, multifunction center, prints in color, um, and is, uh, can be very useful around the office. Um, you, you, can, um, you can do things like uh, scan, uh, scan your documents into your, uh, your PC. That's a, that's a great way of getting rid of paperwork. You've got a lot of paperwork, you don't be afraid to scan them in, and you can actually get rid of the, the hard copies afterwards, because mm -hmm. if you have uh, readable copies, uh, that's actually... Um, it's actually um, something that uh, that is uh, a perfect replacement for for your actual hard copy. So right. you can reduce the amount of paperwork inside your office by using a machine that. like this. Very very simple to use machine. Yeah, uh, Eric was just bringing up a valid point. Just uh, and I guess I guess really it depends on what the what the purpose yeah. of the paper is. But if how does Revenue Canada feel about that? Like if they if you've got tax related stuff, oh. is that? Uh, yeah, it's actually possible uh, on the Revenue Canada site. They actually do state that if you have scanned copies, mm -hmm. legible scanned copies, um, they're worth uh, the originals wow. uh, in terms of uh, their, their value to, uh, to Revenue Canada. Very so uh, it is possible to, to work off scanned copies, so long as you can print them out afterwards and, and create hard copy if necessary. Mm -hmm. Back your stuff up, kids. <laughs> yeah, that's the other neat thing about doing that kind of thing, like uh, archiving your documents through, through scanning, is uh, that you're you're able to back them up if you that's right if you uh, have a fire or a flood you're not losing the only copy that you have exactly you can make several copies and you can put them in different places on dvds you can put them uh, on a hard drive on a uh, all sorts of things you can also uh, there's a free software that comes with this particular machine which is the multifunction pro uh, software mm -hmm. and uh, it allows you to not only scan in those, those documents very easily but also notate them uh, oh, wow. if you want to remember stuff about uh, say a certain bills that you have uh, you can you can actually uh, do little sticky notes on those bills before filing them away, so okay. it has that extra flexibility to it. Uh, it the electronic filing does. Right, and and uh, that particular model that you have there, does it have a sheet feeder as well? Yeah, it's got a 35 page, uh, sorry, 10 page uh, sheet feeder. Okay. Uh, some of our models have 35, but this one is 10 pages. Mm -hmm. So what, what's great about a sheet feeder is that it allows you more time to do other things, uh, you know, around your office while you're scanning in. Because it's it's automated. You you put in a maximum of ten sheets on this model and just let it go. It'll it'll scan those uh, one by one and get them all into your computer, uh, so, sort of uh, in an automated way. Right. And uh, these, these machines have basically kept up with technology a lot. Um, I'll give an example of this one. Uh, Brother just came out with a with a, an app, a free app, uh, which is called iPrint in Scan, uh, which allows you with a machine like this one uh, to actually take a document, let's say uh, you're going to a meeting and you've got a, a, a document like this that you actually want to share electronically, you can take this and uh, put it in the machine and uh, then you can uh, select uh, the Brother app, say you have an iPad and you select the, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that correctly, but uh, now I'll just hit scan on the, on the iPad there. 
So this is and scanning from the scanner wirelessly to your iPad directly? Yes, that's right. From the scanner wirelessly to the iPad. We're working on a Wi-Fi connection here. It's ad hoc right now. Uh, and um, it's just uh, going uh, going to go into this uh, this very simple uh, application. It's actually quite unique right now. There's no other manufacturer that it can actually uh, get you to scan from your MFC into your iPad. Mm -hmm. But we can also print from the iPad to the MFC wirelessly as well. Oh wow! So obviously the advantage. See, it just popped up on the screen there. Uh, awesome. The advantage is you can you know uh, basically if you want to concentrate on this chart, you can make it bigger. Uh, all the nifty things that an iPad can do. Uh, you can do with this application, very simple. You can email it to people uh, at your meeting. You can upload it to a computer or upload it to a server there. Uh, mm -hmm. When you come back, you can print stuff out wirelessly on the MFC uh, that, that people have given you on your iPad. So, I mean, basically speaking, you know, um, $149, you can get a lot of functionality out of uh, a multifunction unit such as this one. Mm -hmm. So features in, in that particular model, that's the MFC uh, J615W. Uh, that's correct. Is there like a card reader for photo printing and things like that? Yes, actually, yes. It uh, can print uh, photos quite well. Okay. Uh, you see there's, a, there's a, a USB port here at the front uh, for PicBridge and USB direct printing. Uh, you can also scan to, uh, to a USB uh, key as well directly without the use of your Great. PC. Mm -hmm. You have a, um, a different um, uh, memory card, a memory card slot that fits the different types of uh, memory cards. Uh, so that allows you to, uh, uh, you know, to, to put a little flexibility in, in uh, not only for yourself in the office, but also for your family. So it's kind of a machine that bridges the gap between uh, your office use and your family use. Right. So it's a great, great home office uh, addition, basically. I actually upgraded to a Brother MFC 6490 CDW a while ago um, from the individual components and I was one of those people Mark that really had trouble um, I guess uh, I, I guess you would say I had trouble grasping why I would trade in my old scanner which scanned just fine and my old printer which printed just fine for an all-in-one unit but then my my printer uh, needed needed a new drum or something it ended up being almost as it was like as much money to buy an, a new printer and it's with the multifunction center I found not only like like you say being able to uh, to print directly from the USB, but also scanning directly to the USB. When we had to do our taxes, for example, I uh, I s put the the papers into the sheet feeder and scan directly to a PDF file on the USB stick. And I presume that this printer will do the same thing. And it's just fantastic that it, it'll do all that, and it's just walk away and hands free, uh, without the need for the interim uh, step of a computer where you have to you know hook up the computer to it and and print. But of course. Or, and scan it using a printer, uh, a scanning application. So saved a lot of work there for me. Um, but also yeah. using it for home use, like for, for just printing home photos and stuff. Saving money uh, printing our own photos on photo paper. Uh, has it, been exactly. really nice as well. There's, there's a lot of different applications. And what you said earlier on about it being one machine instead of like two or three, mm -hmm. is that it's only one machine to learn. It's only one machine to change the consumables on. Right. So, I mean, it's a win-win situation. You're getting something that's, that's more compact, it gives you more space, but at the same time, it's also easier to learn and, and upkeep. Very and intuitive, can, too. Yeah, these machines are extremely intuitive. They have to be because they're, they're, they have to be very appealing to the home office. That's our, that's our main focus at Brother. We're, we're, we're basically experts in, in, in home office and small office uh, creation, uh, machine creation. Fantastic. Sorry, did you did mm -hmm. you have a question? Oh no, I was just going to comment. It takes up a whole lot less real estate than it all sure the does. other components that you might yeah. uh, might want to play with. Yeah, absolutely. So. And uh, like you can see, uh, for those of you who are watching, you can see behind Mark's shoulder there, the the footprint of the printer is is qu quite small. Yeah, but the size of a little print. And that's that does everything. So. So that obviously is going to help us out in the home office, the small business who needs an economical printer. What are we going to, like, what would it cost? Not to turn this into a printer advertisement. I don't want to get to do that because I know we're talking about, um, about organization and, and, and effective use of technology for, for our businesses. But right. that in mind, you know, we do have to think economically as a small business or as a, as a home user uh, who's trying to do business. Um, we definitely are mindful of the economy and and you know how much uh, consumables cost so looking at this yeah. particular model that you have like where does brother fall in with uh, with just n not only the economics but also the environmental friendliness of of consumables well there's a whole range of products that that, that, that there's there's a fairly wide price range 
uh, and that's because there's not only one technology, there's inkjet technology, there's laser technology. Uh, in terms of uh, inkjet technology, that, that's more the one that bridges uh, into family because you can, it allows you to print photos and right. have very vibrant colors. Uh, when it comes to laser technology, that's for someone who's printing like uh, several hundred uh, pages a week, mm -hmm. and that's uh, a business printer basically. Mm -hmm. So there's a, lot, uh, there's a lot going into that. Um, so, I mean, you've got you to gotta kind of feel out what is the best technology for you before you go out and buy, that's, that's certain. Uh, in terms of um, ecological sense, uh, there's, there's several features that, that we have on our printers that are um, eco-friendly, if, if you don't mind me using the term. Um, no, I for appreciate example, it. Well, good. <laughs> there's, there's stuff like toner save mode, ink save mode, you can print draft when you, you know, you can save ink when you don't have to use the, the super high quality right. if you're using uh, just draft documents. Um, we got a, a cartridge system. I'm not sure if you can see here, but uh, there's there's four cartridges, four individual cartridges oh, in this machine. So that means that you change only the cartridge that needs to be replaced. You don't have to replace a whole big uh, cartridge uh, and you know just throw out just because you're you're out of one color. Uh, that's one of the key advantages that we have over the competition in terms of that. Um, in terms of our laser machines, it's, it's very similar. We have a drum and toner system. Drums naturally last a very long time. Toner is toner, and you can go through it quickly or, or more slowly. But essentially, um, on a uh, on an integrated toner drum system, when you're throwing it out, you're throwing out the drum and the toner. Right. Whereas the brother system is drum and toner separate. So you can keep the same drum worth maybe, uh, depending on the model, maybe 20,000 pages, 25,000 pages, yep. and you can change the toner occasionally. So you're, you're throwing a lot less plastic into the environment that way. Right. So... Some some ecological features, if you will. Uh, that's on that's the fantastic, and, and I appreciate that uh, about Brother and and their mindset towards uh, towards both. Well, like you say, the the cartridges being indiv individual like that, we can save a lot of money because if I run out of yellow ink because somebody printed you know a picture that had a lot of yellow flowers in it, like this guy here, maybe someone printed a picture of SpongeBob, <laughs> and and uh, ran off a bunch <laughs> of that, then then you're you're just having to replace or or I guess uh, you can get. Uh, do you support refills with these things, or I, I just well, don't want to touch on that if it's no, no, it's okay. The refills for us is um, it's it's a matter of uh, we we can't really there's no real control on the quality of the product thereafter, right? Because right. uh, if you start refilling, then what exactly is going in there? We our inks are basically engineered from from the beginning of the machine, if you will, mm -hmm. to match the technology of the machine. So in terms of toner, that's that's the exact cooking temperature. Uh, it's right. it's the type of granules that go into it. In, in terms of the ink, there's, there's a lot of different, uh, uh, different elements uh, that have to give the proper viscosity in order for the print head not to get clogged, in order for the, the ink to go onto the page and not sink through. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, R&D that goes into the development of these technologies mm -hmm. uh, that makes it, and, and the machines are built alongside the, the inks uh, through, through the, the, uh, the manufacturing, the, the engineering, the development, the manufacturing process. So, I mean, your best bet with a Brother machine, if you want to optimize your results, if you want the optimal results, you use Brother Genuine uh, consumables because right, right. Uh, any other kind of consumable, whether it be refill or, or you know, whatever's out there, just won't optimize the Brother machine, just right. won't optimize the quality you can get. Makes sense, especially when a lot of these refill places uh, do, like, they, it's like a blanket ink, right? Like, we'll refill yeah. inkjet printers and it's like, the red is the red, and or the magenta. Science, science, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so the viscosity yep. and and other variables are, are all factors in the quality of the printing. So, we appreciate you coming yeah. on the show. Is there anything more that you can that you know more tips that you can give us just real quickly before we wrap up and and head into the news? I know you're anxious to would, to go into that, but anything else that can help us to be organized in our uh, in our home businesses? I would say whatever system that you develop, make sure that it's something that you stick to and that you do regularly. Uh, if it's if it's a half an hour a week, maybe that's all you need just to get your you know have yourself an organized and specific time that you sit down and go through your documents and, and sit through them to get yourself more organized. I think it's it's just being regular, being disciplined, and you'll win and, and you'll, you'll save so much more time in, in the long run. Right. Well, Mark, and I mean, if, there, there's other you can come to brother.ca and come see uh, you know we have other information on, on the home office and plenty of great products uh, that you can look at. Uh, to optimize your home office as well. Fabulous. Thanks for being on the show, Mark. The printer that is, uh, that's behind Mark there, again, that's the MFC J615W, and uh, we're going to actually be giving one of those away in four weeks. Uh, so we're going to be taking some qualifiers Sweet. tonight. I'm going to tell you more about that. 
And Mark, thanks for that. Uh, I know our, our viewers appreciate the, uh, the chance to win a, a fantastic device. Okay, well, thank you very much for having me, Robbie. Thank thanks you. Thanks for being on the show, Mark. Have a great night. See you, Mark. Okay. Bye-bye. This, this is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And you are? I'm Eric Kidd. He's, he's over I, here going, hey, I was, I, was, I was writing on the screen. There's a yeah. spelling error. Is there really? Uh, no. No, actually. No. The, the, the copywriter did a fine job today. <laughs> fine job. You know, actually, I've, I've tried lots of uh, remanufactured cartridges and refills yeah. over the years. And yeah. I always seem to go back to buying I, the original product. I find that product. I always get my feelings hurt. Absolutely right there. So. Yeah. So but that's just... You know. Now you you want to you want to tease to the news because we didn't get a chance because I'd we like to do hit the interview right off the top of the show. But so you let us know what's coming up in the news. That'd be that'd be great. Well, Robbie, what's coming up in oh, the news? What's room going? Oh yeah, what, is, what could it be? You surprised me. Is well, there's a question here. Will Linux users be excited or upset about BBC Radio's new HD audio? Who knows? We'll find out later. Oh great. Online tracking companies and advertisers are using Facebook apps to mine user data for their purposes. Oracle confirms their plans to continue development of the free openoffice.org suite. And good, Ubuntu good. Linux provides touchscreen features similar to the iPad. Ooh, take that. Nice. So stick around for these and all the other latest stories from the Category 5 TV newsroom. Stick around. You've got time. Thanks, sir. Okay. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Where would you possibly go? Well, oh, you just want to you know, tune in. Fantastic. <laughs> we got stuff to give away. We got a printer to qualify for. We got nano dots to give away. Okay. And Eric's over here. I got I'm, nano I'm like, dots. During, during he's saying, Eric, would you stop Mark, playing like, with that? Stop. I can hear it in the microphone. Yeah. And and Mark is is wondering what that noise is. Mark seems to have gotten over it we all. We got to give though. people. We need to give away this pack of nano dots. Yes, because uh, Eric. We just, need to get this off the set. They are addictive. I got to tell you. I actually, I'm I'm making. Uh, <laughs> You know, you can make your sweetie some jewelry, some bling. Oh, I, I messed it up already. Messed it up. Um, yeah. So, focus. What do we got? You got some questions coming. I I've know got you're some playing. Questions. I know you're having a good time. It's kind of nice. Yeah. And it'll cure what ails you, apparently. No, that's not one of their claims. <laughs> <laughs> Corey's just. For the Corey same. said Come to on, put buddy. the nano dots down. Put them down. away. Put them away. You're down. They're down. They are cool, though. You got. You have to touch these to to really know how neat. They are. This is. As cool as, uh, you know, like, Beans. well, way back in the old days when I was a kid, say, the thermometer broke and all that mercury, mercury would be rolling around the floor. I mean, this as long stuff as isn't dangerous, but... Well, as long as well, you don't eat it, which you're not going to do, but it not is... Not on purpose. It's really neat. <laughs> I well, haven't seen you make too much out of it yet, but uh, yeah. there we go. Well, I'm going to put that right there. We're going to give those away a little later. It's going to give them away on me. Well, Bruce Moore has a question, hey, Bruce. or maybe it's a comment. Okay. <clears throat> he in, uh, enjoys your show via Miro. Very good. So there, Thanks and congratulations here. on the fourth year. So thank you. He sees that you recommend Seagate Barracuda drives, and he says I've trusted them myself for many years until recently. Okay. When I was building myself a new computer, 100% Ubuntu. A couple of years ago, I chose a shiny new 500 gigabyte Seagate Barracuda. Within a few weeks, I was experiencing some random file corruption problems and suspected a possible hard drive fault. So I bought another 500 gigabyte Seabyte, Seagate. Can I start over again? I'm gonna okay. Just pick it up where you and replaced off. it. Unfortunately, the file corruption <laughs> issues continued, and I also noticed recurring slow performance as well. Mm. Program is taking abnormally long to launch, etc. Over the ensuing months, I made countless attempts to isolate a cause, changing cables, checking various software settings, even running with slower system clocks, all to no avail. Now, I'll just say my first flag with that is you need to check your firmware version on your hard drive. If you, if you buy a new hard drive, right out of the box, you get a brand new hard drive, and a lot of times you're going to have a firmware update that comes out after people have started using the drives. And uh, back in the day, the 500 gig was a pretty big hard drive. And uh, so the first thing that they did is they released a firmware update for the Seagate drives. Uh -huh. If you didn't get that update, you're going to experience some problems. Not really a Seagate hard drive problem, but you got to be, you got to know that, that the firmware is important. So you always check the Seagate site uh, or any manufacturer for that matter. I had the same problem with one of our webcams. Okay. 
where it was really, really problematic. Checked the website. There was a firmware update. I've had that with that wireless and, routers. A few same times. sort of idea, yeah. So not to interrupt, but that would so. be the first thing that we, we should check. So a few months ago, I was looking at the Ubuntu 10.04 disk utility. It showed my drive with a reassuringly green disk is healthy status. Good. I decided to look at the detailed smart data, that's mm -hmm. smart, and was shocked by what I found there. My drive had racked up a trillion, with an exclamation mark, seek errors, many millions of read errors, and something wow. like 50k replaced sectors. My original Seagate drive reported proportionately similar counts. I had finally identified the source of my problems. I replaced this drive with a new one from Samsung and have enjoyed error-free, rock-solid performance ever since. Good. Keep a close eye on your smart data, especially for large Seagate drives. I hear you, Bruce, for sure. Cheers, Bruce. But, uh, but definitely, like I say, reiterate, check your firmware version because those drives and, and quite often the newer drives, uh, as they come out, they're, they're, they're released like an OEM drive, right, is, is packaged. It's released and nobody ever opens the package because you're going to buy it new, right? right? So even if the drive has been sitting on the shelf for two years and you think, well, you know, 750 gig drive there, that's an old drive, it's, it's going to be fine. It may still have the original firmware on it. So if a new firmware update has come out, if they detected some kind of problem with the firmware that's corrupting data or something like that, and I, I agree it did happen to Seagate, unfortunately, with those 500 gig drives, but, uh, but that doesn't mean the drive is no good. It just means that you need to update the software that's built into the chip. And then once that's done, you'll be good to go. So dig those out of the garbage can, Bruce. And yeah. <laughs> Although warranty may have replaced them, you know, because they would just update the firmware and, and put it in a used system or something. But uh, definitely that's something to check. And then, yeah, people recommending try Spinrite as well uh, is, a, is a good piece of software. But uh, that, would be, that would be step two. First one is I would check the firmware. Thanks for that, though. Definitely. And I'm glad that you found... Uh, that you found better luck with another hard drive because that would have been frustrating trying to diagnose that. Yeah. That's why Robbie's here. No? A yeah. good listener. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey, this is Frederick Rabbit has a question. Hey, Frederick Rabbit. Okay. Um, hey, Robbie. Hey. I really love the show. I've been using Thanks. Linux since Hardy Heron. I have learned a lot since those early days, and I am always trying to learn more. I hope you can help me out with this one thing. Okay. How can I easily refresh my desktop with a bash command without restarting my computer? Examples of why I would like to do this are as follows. Example one, I installed a new game from the Ubuntu Software Center, but it was not available in the applications menu ah. under games. Okay. I am able to guess the command to run the game using Alt F2. I could also, under System Preferences Main Menu, see that the game was checked and should appear in the menu, but it would not appear until I completely restarted the system. Shall we go on to example two? Example this two. This is a very well organized email. It certainly Thank is. You. He was listening to Mark and he's I got other depends. stuff there, that he didn't need. Are there 10 examples? <laughs> 37 of them. Wow. Example two. I was able to set up. You share to act as a media server using my Xbox 360, and it worked wonderfully, by the way. However, I would like to be able to restart the service via command line instead of restarting my system. If I add mm. files to the shared folders, they are not immediately available from the Xbox menu. Any suggestions on restarting services with the system running okay. can be appreciated. For you share. Keep up the good work. Cheers. You share. I'm just going to quickly see if there. Uh, you could type, go into the terminal and go uh, you share dash dash help. You share space dash dash help. But I believe it's, uh, let's see if there's a, a restart command. Because with that, you're, it's a running application. It's, it's like a, a, it could be the daemon or whatever you want to call it, is running. So there has to be a, a command from the, from the console or the terminal that, that allows you to restart that. What it is, I'm not sure because I haven't installed it. I don't have an Xbox 360 or any use for it. But do type. <laughs> you, well, sure. that's not what I meant. <laughs> so any use for the software? Okay. If somebody wants to send me an Xbox 360, I will set up a media sharing server, <laughs> guaranteed. It's not what I meant. Thanks for calling me on that. Sorry. Um, I'll try to behave myself in the future. If the commands you share, 
go into terminal, type u share space dash dash help, and see if any of those options that it spews out are going to allow you to restart the system. Uh, so as far as your GNOME issue with, with your panels, when you install an app in, uh, through Synaptic Package Manager or through Apt or whatever, and you're expecting there to be a new menu item on the, uh, on the applications menu, it's not there yet, and then you have to reboot your computer, apparently, in order to see that. It's not really necessary because all you need to do is restart uh, GNOME panel. So what you can do is uh, you can actually hit Alt F2. I'm going to see if I can get my screen up here, my lovely festive. <laughs> Jump with the gun on that, aren't you? Hey, yeah, there you go. Jumping the gun a little bit on that. Well, you know, Halloween is coming. Okay, kill all. Uh, we don't need a dash nine, but you go gnome dash panel. What that command does is it does exactly what you'd expect. It takes gnome panel and it kills it. It closes it down forcibly. Uh, but what happens is Ubuntu then detects kind of like Windows with Explorer.exe, right? If it crashes, it automatically reloads. So with killing gnome panel, so kill all space, gnome panel, gnome dash panel, it's going to kill your panel and then it's instantly going to reload. I can demonstrate that just to show you how, how quickly that's actually going to take effect. So if you watch my panel is up here, so that's this guy here. Watch the applications and, my, and all my options up there. So I'm going to run this command, kill all gnome panel. There it goes. There it is. It's back. But it's reloaded. So now, instantly, I've got access to those applications without having to reboot my computer. So that's, I think, what you're looking for with that one. So hope that helps. Kill all space gnome dash panel. That's right. Is that right? I, I was right. paying attention. Good. Sorry, I was Thanks, dude. Thinking about That's because I took away the nano dots, yeah. Yeah. So you were <laughs> able to pay attention now. Yes. <laughs> Somebody sent me drunk, I'm home. No. What? <laughs> what else we got going on? Hey, everybody, this is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. It's so nice to have you here, uh, having a good time. John, you having a good time? How are you? I think I've got a camera on you tonight. There he is. Hey. Hey. What are you looking at oh, in your cup there? I was looking yeah. if I have any coffee left. Oh, dear. But I don't. Uh, well, we gotta, we gotta, I can go and get him some. <laughs> no. I need you here. Okay. I need you here. You know who else is here? Who else is here? We have some new viewers. Fantastic. Welcome. We have... These are the ones we know about anyway. Well, I should have looked over that Is before. my handwriting really bad? Oh. I think that's Amanda Hayes. That's right. That looked like a pair of T's, not an H, and I was Sorry. going for Amanda that's H. An H. Yes. Oh, okay. 24. Hey, Amanda. So, hey, Amanda Hayes, 24. And Jollymon5 from Missouri. Hey. Yeah. Nice to have you here. And we have B. Hedrick from Iowa. Welcome. And this could be... I would say Kitty's E. Kitty's E? Okay. Hey, New Jersey. <laughs> hey, Kitty's E. Nice to have you here. Anybody joining us for the first time in the chat room? We'd love to hear from you. Category5.tv. You'll see us in the chat room on freenode.net, uh, irc.freenode.net, and our, hash, our chat room is Category5. Yeah. And if you'd like to be mentioned on the show, all you have to do to become a new viewer is just register on our website. It's free, Category5.tv. You'll become a, uh, a registered viewer. Sounds That's all like it takes. A good plan. Yeah. We don't spam. We don't sell or give away your information. We, we just don't love smoke to know. We don't do school. that either. Is that a song? Sure. That's or a did song. you just make that up? No, no, that's that's Merle Haggard's song. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, there we go. How I didn't know that. How did you not know that? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't born when it oh, came out. Oh dear me. I don't know. That's I that's this guy's check. department. But I, uh, well, you've got you've got news, and then we'll we'll hit questions. Why don't, why don't we go to news sure. now? How to yeah. In, okay. How to put in a time delay for editing purposes? Okay. Oh. We'll take a look. <coughs> we'll uh, we'll hit the news right now, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll see if, uh, if we've got that question. How's well, here's everything you need to know from the newsroom, Robbie, and Excellent. all you viewers. Hey, the everybody. BBC has decided to do something about poor sound quality of their online BBC radio feeds. But some would say <laughs> they're going about it all wrong. 
Okay. BBC listeners will experience the new HD sound beginning on Radio 3 in December, as long as it is supported on their platform. The HD sound feeds will indeed provide a much more full sound and wider frequency, but it will be available solely in a browser-based player at the beginning, and there is no word yet as to what audio codec it is actually going to use, or if the streams will later be made available to Linux-based media players like Tome or even common Windows players such as Winamp. I was supposed to say Totem. So in this case, it is my fault. Shall, Carrying on. Shall I Totem. Give, the, give the copywriter a, a, a <laughs> bit of a... Was, was that a transcription error? That might have been. Okay. Well, you may not know this. The sky is blue. Wow. Water is wet. Hmm. And Facebook has some serious security issues when it comes to your private information. None of these statements come as a surprise to anyone, except except some kids I know who... No, we won't get into that. <laughs> In the latest of Facebook security concerns, the Wall Street Journal has determined that a significant number of advertising and online tracking companies are using Facebook apps in order to transmit your private information to as many as dozens of companies. Hmm. One company in particular was also found to be mining user information in an effort to compile a database of user information which will later sell to the highest bidder. Yikes. Even with your Facebook security set to the strictest settings, you are not protected from this type of exploit. While Facebook attempts to protect its 5 million users from this type of data mining, chances are they either will not be able to fix this one or at very least not well. Well, that's uh, not very optimistic. We, we can't be very optimistic with Facebook security, can we? I guess not. They have 500 million users. If you can believe, that's a massive amount of people. That is. That are affected by that's this. That's more than 300. It's much more. Yeah. I don't know where you got that number. Anyway. Just pick the number. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Oracle announced its participation in the ODF PlugFest during OpenOffice.org's 10th anniversary celebration. PlugFest is a conference in Belgium which is aimed at improving the open document format. Oracle also stated that it would continue to develop, update, and release OpenOffice.org as open source software. The free Office suite will continue to compete directly with Microsoft's commercial Office product. This comes as a relief to its 100 million, that's quite a few users, 100 million <laughs> users who are eagerly awaiting the final release of OpenOffice.org 3.3, whose release candidate is now available for download off their site. Open Office's future looks bright, and we'll look forward to seeing some of the new features Oracle introduces in the years to come. The Open Office suite is a free download from openoffice.org. Glad to hear that. Yeah. With a stunning, stunning video. <coughs> what the heck's in this coffee? <laughs> With a. I'm going to try just, I'm just take taking another run at that, Robert. Right, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm getting a bit of a cold here. I think I caught it from my. <laughs> you're giving. You're giving. I John think I caught it from the host. Oh yeah. With a stunning video presentation, Canonical demonstrated on Thursday <laughs> how the new UTouch stack interacts with Unity, the netbook-specific version of Ubuntu. UTouch. I'm wondering if I should say UTouch since I'm saying Ubuntu. It just. UTouch you allows just, you users to, to the control end. their desktop and interact with tools and applications using their fingers and a touch screen, much like an iPad. With the current version impressing users on Ubuntu 10.10, .10, the upcoming Ubuntu 11.04, which releases in April, will focus on further improving the gestures feature of UTouch. And we can look forward to what this means for touchscreen devices running Ubuntu. Very good. All right. So you can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. And the category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. There you go. Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Planet Calypso. This massive multiplayer online game is available as a free download from cat5.tv slash calypso. 
Now once you've got it downloaded and installed on your Windows computer, make sure you say hi. And there's something for everyone here on Planet Calypso, from hunting to mining, crafting, and just plain socializing and having fun with your friends. You can download it for free at cat5.tv slash calypso. If you're a Linux user like myself, of course this makes it worth the dual boot. cat5.tv slash calypso. I'll see you on Planet Calypso. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. It is just flying along, along yeah, it tonight. Is. We're, we're, well. We've got 15 minutes to, uh, to go and uh, prizes to give away. We're taking qualifiers for that Brother printer. That's the, uh, that is the MFC J615W. And you can find out more about the specs uh, through cat5.tv slash MFC short for multifunction center. Now, okay. the, the, the one thing that is, is kind of unfortunate today with this particular prize, not, not to the Canadian viewers, but we can only, unfortunately, ship this within Canada. That's just, ah. that's just a rule with this particular item. You know that we try very, very hard to have uh, prizes be able to uh, be delivered to Jot over in the yes, Netherlands. Yes, Jot does like... <laughs> <laughs> but in this particular case, uh, it is going to be Canadian viewers only uh, for this particular item. That's the MFC printer uh, from Brother Canada. So for those of you who are watching from Canada, make sure you email me cont uh, contest at category5.tv and let me know your username in the chat room, uh, your real name, as well as your mailing address and phone number. And in four weeks' time, we are going to be conducting that draw. And of course, we're going to be taking ballots during that time. In the meantime, we do have nanodots to give away, which are shipping globally, and uh, we've got lots of uh, lots of exciting right. stuff coming up uh, in the future as well. What if Gadget Wisdom Guru gets a post office box in Canada? Can he? Well, that's uh, as long as you've got a yeah. Canadian shipping address. Certainly, okay. I mean, who's to say, right? But as long as we can ship it to you in Canada, then there you go. So that that covers that. <laughs> All right. Sorry hey. to all the viewers who cannot qualify for that particular one. But I'm going to find other stuff to send to you. So there. There we go. You got all a right. question? Hey, we have an inquiry via email. Hey. Uh, it's from Christy Burton. Hey, Christy Burton. How's the weather? Oh, that, that was my question. That <laughs> wasn't her question. Hello, awesome, Robbie. That wasn't her question. Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> Christy. Eric, how about some guitar? He won't let me play it on the show. It's way it's out of reach. Failing that, perhaps you can answer a question. I need to incorporate a profanity delay for radio. Okay. Okay. I'm not the only one. To put it in the words of someone named Dave in a Christian radio news group, looking for an inexpensive audio delay system. We are analog through our, our entire system. We use an audio console between our on-air automation and our STL. Okay. As an aside, someone here suggested that we send our audio out to an internet streaming server and use the round trip delay as our profanity delay. Good thinking, but I would much rather have something in-house. Oh, I see what you're saying. That is totally under our control and has better quality than in an internet stream. I appreciate any suggestion you may have. May you and your studio and plant be blessed. Cheers. End quote. And I need to know, oh, too. Oh, that was the email that she was, was quoting. Yes. Oh, I was like, thanks, Christy. That's so sweet. Okay, so end quote. <laughs> and I need to know, too, is digital a different ballgame? We're analog out to the tower, but the files are digital. Sure. Anyway. Blessings to everyone. Ah, Special hi thanks, to Christy. Hans. And you too. Did I say that correctly? And hope I can see the show live tonight if I'm done my meeting. Okay. Well, I hope you're here. If not, I'm sure somebody will relay the message. Um, the, okay, last question about uh, analog versus digital. Now, the, the files are digital on the computer, probably MP3s or something along those lines. Then they go through the mixing console, I'm sure, and then out through the analog STL out to the tower. Uh, that's the the sir uh, the what's the STL technically? That's the transmitter link, studio transmitter link. So from the board, it goes out through the studio transmitter link uh, to the tower, and then it's broadcast. So there's really nothing in between your mixing console, which provides the analog signal through the STL out to the tower, to the 
broadcasting transmitter. So in that case, I, I'm starting to grasp what you mean about, about looping back through an internet feed. And the problem with that is you're going to be using bandwidth out and in, and you're relying on your internet connection in order to do that. Unless you put a shoutcast server internally or icecast server internally at the studio and do it through the LAN. That doesn't make any sense, and I don't need to explain it, but it'll make sense to the guy who, <coughs> who recommended it, okay? I wouldn't do it through the internet because then you're relying on that internet connection all the time, both up and down. Somebody installs a torrent program on their computer, which is bound to happen at a volunteer radio station, and then all of a sudden it knocks out your feed. So that's a big problem. Plus, then you've got to have something on the other end, on the receiving end, that allows you to mute it or bleep it if there is some kind of censoring that's required. And like you say, there's going to be some quality loss there. But if it's internal, you could broadcast it at MP3, uh, let's say 356 kilobits per second. Because it's internal, you're going through a LAN at a gigabit a second. So you've got more than enough bandwidth to handle that as long as it doesn't hit the internet. In that case, you're not going to lose any quality because your MP3s are going to be at uh, 256 or 320, uh, I don't know. 256 will do, or 3 something, whatever the actual number is. So that's, that is a way that it could be done through the LAN. I would say if you don't want to spend any money, that's really your only option. Or uh, call up a, a 320. Thanks, Jot. Call up a DJ store that does live, that provides uh, mixing consoles and yeah. effects units, MIDI-controlled effects units for DJs. Because uh, DJs quite often, and I mean DJs like, because they use delay. Nicely done, Rob. Just like that. I was going to say, can you do beatbox? Because sometimes they got to go boom, boom, boom. You know, they got to back it up a little bit, which you could use to censor. It's a little bit of a workaround. But anyways, there you go with the nano dots. Always with the nano dots. Always. So with a DJ rig, you could have something that has a delay system with reverse, which allows you to back up in time. If somebody says a cuss word or something, you hit that reverse button, it backs it up like two seconds, and then it just cuts that out because there's a 10 second delay. So you're able to do that without losing any time on, on the air. So disadvantage to a delay system, you, you'd have to have something in place that's going to be controllable as far as how much time you're going to be spending uh, in the delay. Because if, if you're, you're doing news radio, Christy, so uh, your time stamps have to be very accurate. So you know if it's 6 a.m., you've got to be able to say it's 6 a.m. with confidence and it's not 6.02 because you've got a two minute delay based on an MP3 encode and decode on a shoutcast server. So, and you don't have any control over that. If for some reason the server lags or skips, all of a sudden the, the delay becomes bigger and you don't have control over the length of the delay. So you might be good to look at something that's designed for, like I say, the DJ stuff, but it can be expensive. Uh, Dan Systems. Let's see if I can pull this up on my computer. It has a free piece of software called Radio Delay. It was designed for sport nets. DanSystems.com, and it's Dan with two A's. Let's see if I can track this down. If anyone can do it, Rob, you can do it. I will try. For Christy, I can do all things. Okay, so let's see what we have. Audio, audio stuff. Radio delay, real-time audio delay. So I'm going to click on that link. And Radio Delay is a tool to delay audio from your FM radio in your TV or your TV tuner card or whatever or external input source. So you need a computer with a balanced input because you don't want to unbalance your signal at a radio station. Uh, and then you'll need a balanced output back to your STL. So this program here is just a tiny little program that, uh, that will allow you to control a delay. You see this slider here, delay in seconds. So you're able to control how long the delay is for. You set the input device to your first device, set the output device to your second device, and that software is free, so that's going to be your, your next best thing, and it's, it's going to be obviously very, very cheap, but you have to have a computer that is reliable. Get something with a RAID controller, with a RAID 1, something that ha has two hard drives running at all times, so that if one fails, you're, you've got a backup. Or better yet, install uh, the operating system on a USB flash key or something like that, something where there's no moving parts. and uh, or uh, uh, do a RAID 1 with, uh, with solid state drives, something along those lines. So there's so much stuff you can do. And there are a lot of rack mount units, Yeah, used to the be. DJ rigs, but you're getting into the thousands of dollars most times. And I don't really know if there's anything I could suggest that's going to be cheaper than that. There are a couple of, you know, there's the Delay Play from DelayPlay.com. 
I don't know that that's going to suit your purpose, but it is a cheap little unit for like 50 bucks. Let's see if that one comes up. So this little unit has just a slider that allows you to control how many seconds the delay is for. But then again, it's going to be an unbalanced signal, and I don't think your engineer is going to like that. I think they're going to want to keep things balanced, in which case you want a computer software that's going to allow you to use balanced inputs and outputs. So hope that helps. I hope that uh, that, that helps your, your, uh, your colleague who, uh, who sent you the original email, uh, or that it, I guess it was in a news group or something like that. But uh, I hope know. that helps you out. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You can find us online at www.category5.tv. And we're not going to get to look at that audio software, are we, tonight? Unbelievable. Really quick, right? Well, really quick, but I've got stuff to give away. I've got to get rid of these oh. nano dots so you can't play with them anymore. I'm playing with them. <laughs> Anything you'd like me to make? Join us in the chat room. This is your last chance to qualify for nano dots. Category5.tv. Get in the chat room. It's a cool little game. You can do all kinds of uh, things. Check out cat5.tv slash nanodots for some videos uh, because Eric's demonstrations just do not cut it justice. Well, Sorry, dude. You know Sorry, what? I'm dude. taking this home. I'm going to build you a, a, a car with moving parts. A helicopter. Fabulous. Maybe a hovercraft. It's powered by magnetism. Yeah. Yeah, that's Brilliant. it. Brilliant. Okay. John's nodding his head. Yes. Yes, magnetism. Brilliant. And good on very excellent fuel economy. Fuel economy is fantastic on a magnetically powered car. Unless you drive, you have to actually drive toward the poles yeah. in order for it sure. to move. You can't drive east or west. Yeah, you sometimes do. You have to pedal with your feet. It's all good. We're taking qualifiers for the last set of nano dots tonight. You gotta, you gotta put these out there. You go. Just so doesn't check look it out. like much when well, you're playing with them. Well, Robbie. I don't really know how to work it, but because you've been playing with it more than I have. You're very cool. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Lots of names in the chat room tonight. Somebody wanted to know if that brother was going to work on their uh, Ubuntu system. Yeah, brother's fantastic for, for Linux support these days. Oh, yeah? They were one of the printer manufacturers that really got on board with uh, providing proper Linux drivers, and, and I love them for that. My brother, uh, MFC, functions just fine, both like scanning, printing, all the, like, the, the PC faxing and all it's all it's all available so that's very cool yeah here we go last pack of nano dots see a lot of friendly faces and gadwill is our winner tonight congratulations wow. is gadwill okay no gadwill is uh, oh it's nano dots can go anywhere nano dots can go anywhere yeah yeah <laughs> so the uh the last pack of nano dots goes to gadwill well congratulations gadwill congratulations yeah I may not send them to you, though. I may just hang on to them. <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv, and we are just out of time. Tie but, Eric's uh, hand, somebody said. My goodness. We could do it with <laughs> they nanodots. Can, they can hear that. They can hear that. I know. He's a fidgeter, people. I, I, do you notice I gave him a pen that doesn't click to the, this week? <laughs> I said, oh, look, we got, we got pens that are sponsored by superantispyware.com. Little does he know, I actually, you know, that, that's, that's fantastic. Thanks for sending us the pens, superantispyware.com. But, truth be told, I just didn't want him clicking them. But check it out, superantispyware.com. You're and such an adult. It worked. Oh, sure. Now we just got to get rid of all the rest of the nano dots and stuff. No, I'm still playing. All right. It's been fun tonight. I hope everybody's had fun. How are you doing in the chat room? We'd love to chat with you a few minutes after the show and uh, just see how you're doing. And if you're watching this on uh, one of our... Uh, RSS feeds or uh, Miro Internet TV, iTunes. Uh, it's great to have you here. Make sure you pop me an email live at category5.tv just to say hey, or uh, if you have a question about technology and you weren't able to get it in tonight, we'd love to hear from you. Or we'll even a suggestion. A suggestion. We welcome yeah. suggestions and we welcome viewer testimonials, which next week we're actually going to be uh, reviewing some of the ones that came in over the past couple of weeks. Category5.tv is where you'll find us. If you want to submit a viewer testimonial, it's interact and you'll see submit a testimonial. That's it for us. All right. It flew by tonight. It's gone. It's gone. It's in the books. Yep. It's under the rug. Another one. <laughs> Next week's 162. Have a fantastic week. John, you take care. Good to see you. Thank you. You too. Yeah. See you, folks. Cheers, everybody. See ya.